also very confident on those kind of champions. Absolutely. So those mid players are, oh, there we go. The first ban, Nidalee. Nidalee Akali being taken away, of course. I didn't want Mega Zero to have that one, maybe. Was yeah. that Mega Zero? Would that be Echo? I mean, I... It's, it's no, Mega I don't think Zero. I've seen Mega Zero on it too much, but it is him. He never really gets a chance. There's a Renekton ban. That definitely is Mega Zero, of yeah. course. Diana and Elise also taken away. Elise has kind of been a common ban, safe to say. And Diana has been one of those strong picks in North America so far. Yeah, I mean, Dignitas really brought her to the forefront of the North American scene with two of their players being very strong Diana players. They can use it side lane, so split pushing. They really like that Nasher's Tooth build where you can push all day and wave clear really quickly. So a lot of other people have actually picked that champion up from them, and it's a pretty common ban nowadays as well. So Twisted Fate also taken away, and we saw Rumble insta-lock there, so Mega Zero <laughs> going to be potentially happy with his choice. I'm trying to think whether he played Rumble yesterday. I don't think he did. He was up against Rumble, if I recall. He's he's played Rumble a lot. It's He wants to pick his champions first because he doesn't have a very big pool. So if you take out the Renekton and the Akali, he wants to grab one of his few <laughs> remaining champions before the other team can get him. So we usually see Marn pick one of those top laners first. And Rumble's definitely, he's definitely a accomplished Rumble player. Again, it's one of those solo lane champions where you have to think twice before ganking him. We saw before uh, yesterday, uh, Dyrus on Rumble was able to turn around a gank and got the kill for himself yeah. and stayed alive. It just, uh, it really snowballed his lane. So you have to be very careful when dealing with that Rumble. So it looks like they're gonna go for the AD and the jungler and that is gonna be Caitlyn and Volibear. Volibear definitely been one of the junglers <laughs> we've seen a lot of. We're gonna see Nasus to go along with it. Um, we might. Flakey plays a lot of bruiser junglers. He's he's got he's got a little bit more passive as the LCS has gone on because in the beginning of the LCS, Clakey would play Jarvan or Vi. Mm. And he would get caught out a couple times trying to get his early ganks off, walking over wards, and it kind of made him a little bit more safe player. He's really changed his style and it's been working to, to Martin's advantage. They play as a team a little bit safer. And so he might go with something like the Nasus, which really takes a lot more effect late game with mm -hmm. the, the fully stacked Wither and that Max Spirit Fire. So much that he can add to the to the game a little bit later. Well, they're definitely taking their time on this one. Not going to be insta lock champions. Looking like they may go for Lux getting there locked in early. So locking in that mid laner fairly early on. And there is, as you mentioned, Nasus. Kind of expected that one. So top laner, we think they could counter the mid. Now they know what they're up against, but Maybe a little bit too soon. Do you not think that's an early pick for the mid lane there? Uh, I mean, we everybody knows the kinds of champions that both these mid laners really want, and they want to take away Lux from Mandatory Cloud because without the Nidalee, that would probably be Mandatory Cloud's next bet to go with, right. since he does like catching people out. So you pick it early, it opens you up to an assassin sort of counter, um, someone like Cassidy or something who could, at level 6, get in very close on Lux is actually a pretty good pick against her if you can find a way to get Cassidy into level 6 without being starved. Um, so the counter picks there for Lux are a little bit few and far between, and he, they're just trying to take that away from Mentor Cloud. Well, we do see Singe being hovered over, Lulu also. Singed, of course, this is 3.04. Singe took, Singe took a hit in this one, so it'd be he interesting did. to see if Psycho Sid goes for this. He, uh, he's got a lot less damage, I feel like, on the fling. I mean, they, they nerfed not only the base damage, but also the AP ratio. And he's still that same annoying champion. His core strength, the poison. Mm. He can run around in circles. If you chase him, you're still going to lose a lot of life. And people have not given up on him. He, they still think he's a really solid champion. He was by far one of the most annoying champions to play with before. Uh, they took off a lot of the stuff off his ultimate and the damage off his fling. Now he's in a, a pretty good place. He's a balanced top laner that's still usable sometimes. And it looks like they might actually want to do a two versus one switch. Caitlyn and Lulu is great at shoving very early and taking an early tower. So if you send that up against Rumble, then you don't really have to worry about the really dangerous um, one versus one Rumble play. And especially since it's Mega Zero, you kind of want to take advantage of that. We saw Avaris and Janna did get picked up. Janna starting to become a little bit more popular here, and Kazakh's currently being held over by Mandatory Cloud. Yeah, Varus as well. Uh, for North America, it's it's been pretty recent, and a lot of people really just like the burst on him. Um, they combo that with an interesting item build, rushing the Cutlass into the Blade of the Ruined King, and especially in solo queue, you catch a lot of people off guard. You can just burst them down all the way from 100 to zero as you're um, kiting away, which Janna actually helps out with a lot since she's got the movement speed and stuff. Um, but Varus has been pretty popular in the Korean and Chinese scenes as well over late. He's actually right behind MF 
in the AD carry uh, win rate rankings right now. So definitely very popular. Oh, MF was available, of course. Hasn't been picked for quite a while. I don't think it's the entire time I've been here at North American LCS. Obviously, did have a slight hit, so nobody has allowed it through. So there's the two teams. You can see them pre prepping themselves. Discussions between them, whether they're happy or sad with their picks. Who would be the happier of the two? Uh, looks like Psycho Sid's pretty happy there. So I guess Vulcan uh, might be the happier right now. And even though Martin looks like they got most of what they wanted. Nian Tanto is a very versatile AD. He can play all of the AD, the really popular ADs, as well as just random mid champions and stuff because he's played all over the place. Heartbeat is the one I would be looking at in that bottom lane since he's very new to the support role. And Janna's actually a fairly technical support, uh, getting off timely knockups and timely shields uh, as well as that ultimate is really going to be a test for heartbeat in his new position well we are about to get things underway this is going to be the first game of the north american lcs it will be man versus vulcan six games today remember just like we had yesterday this is the cancelled ipl weekend we are here back in the studio in los angeles so Thank you very much for tuning in in Europe and North America and wherever else you may be in the world that trying to catch a glimpse of the North American scene, of course. I know there's a lot of people staying up over in Europe to keep keep a glimpse on this one. We are getting underway, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be Marn as the blue team and Vulcan as the red team. Level 1 setups. Are we going to see an invade? We saw a few crazy little moments yesterday, of course. Dignitas fell foul to Curse's trap yeah. yesterday. Will we see similar things? Um, well, we see a spreading out here from Vulcan. It looks like they're going to go very defensive. They just want to um, place their early wards and catch Marn on their invade. Marn look a little bit more focused. They've got a plan where Jan is going over to defensively ward their blue side, and then they're just going to camp out this bush and try to catch Lulu if, if Lulu comes over to place a ward at this Wraith bush. Well, we see them setting up. As you mentioned, they want to try and get in there. They have the rumble to harpoon to get the slowdown. The witherers, are, well, could come out. There's just anything to keep them slowed down. They haven't picked the skills yet. We see Psycho Sid doing a spamming the laugh. I think it's safe to say, man. Maybe. Do you, are they, do you think they're going to go for a late invade or they're just purely on protective duty here? Yeah, it, they're just looking for the ward placement here. This is a very common ward that a lot of teams will place by the Wraith Bush. So you can see when the junglers come, if they want to come mid lane or something, when they're around the red buff. But it just so happens that Vulcan are not going to do any very deep wards. They just place some defensive ones on their side of the river. So no, no early action here. The only thing is there is one red elixir on the map that's going to be Mandatory Cloud with Kha'Zix. And that can actually catch you by surprise once he does get his jump as well as his Q. It can do a lot of damage if you're isolated from the rest of your creeps. We'll see that again any kill yump, kill yumps going on today. But that's going to be later on whether them resets do happen. We see the golems being taken in the bot lane. And up the top lane is going to be Lulu heading up there along with him. It's going to be the AD carry, so we will see the lane switches, as you mentioned. We did expect it to come out, and it will be happening. Of course, the mid lane is going to stay the same. Clicky D is going to get the help of Heartbeat on the red buff. And Psycho Sid's helping out Smithy on the blue. Doesn't look like either are going to be giving any buffs away. So it's going to be standard setups. I think this is almost safe to say now. Three minute to it dash. Yeah, this is going to be pretty standard. The only thing here is Psycho Sid has teleport on his Singe. So he's going to be a little bit better off than Mega Zero up there. It might be hard for Mega Zero to defend his tower as effectively because he doesn't have that easy way to get back to lane after the first burst of damage. And we see an Echo versus Mandatory Cloud here. How do you stack this one? Lux versus Kha'Zix. Mandatory Cloud had the uh, chance of obviously counter picking in towards Echo, so you'd expect him to be stronger. Yeah, he did get that um, assassin pick, so once he does get leveled up, he gets his level 6. Then it's going to be a little bit dangerous for Lux, but the early levels, Lux with her range and the chance to land those bindings actually has the upper hand. If she can land a binding on Mandatory Cloud, that would be a great setup for a gank because Wither is is really effective even at level 1. So if you have Nasus just walking in there and you land a binding, it could at least get the flash out of him. Well done, this bot lane. Yenton so and Heartbeat we see trying to keep Psycho Sid zoned out from as much experience as he can get. He's still at level 2, so he's keeping up with the, the duo pairing, but he would be looking to try and stretch that one. Smithy sneaking in his top bush. So we also have Clakey coming up with the wave clear strategy. Nasus is great with this. He actually goes straight for Muffin. And they're going to flick. Actually, Clakey D tried to flick him in there. Actually, I think he flicked him the wrong way. Went into the wall, which means he didn't 
carry much distance. It does still mean that Vulcan are going to put pressure on towards his top turret, though. Nasus a bit too heavy, and the wave clear is not going to be there. What he really needed to do was come in and spirit fire the wave. And now they're going in towards Mega Zero. Mega Zero trying to put the damage down on Muffin. Cutie takes a tower hit and the ignite, and now Smith is going to take a tower hit, but it is going to be first blood. It's Zuna that picks it up on Mega Zero. Oh, that was a little bit of a misplay from Marn right there. I would have liked to see the Spirit Fire from Nasus to go down on the wave instead of on the Lulu. They weren't aware that, that uh, Smithy was at that top lane, though. And then the miscommunication as Clakey goes back, Mega Zero stays there, three versus one tower dive, and we do actually see the early first blood. Well, this bottom lane, you can see Psycho Sid, he took some damage as well. The Intonso and Heartbeat working away on that turret. Not a great deal of damage on this top lane, despite the fact they did have that kill. They have managed to clear it out. Clicky D, because he went back early, he's got himself straight back on towards that turret to protect it. Yeah, it's uh, he's going to try, and so they don't lose as many minions to the turret, but it really, really hurts Mega Zero. Not only did he die, but he also used his Flash and his Ignite, so he's going to have no summoner spells. He has only consumable items. He had to go with that very effective buy of the Doran Shield to just try and get some health and some regen from somewhere. It does look like the mid laners are starting to back off. Tyria the Goddess being picked up by Echo. And a mandatory cloud has just gone back. He's picked himself a tier of the goddess as well. Remember, he's still got that fort pot. Hasn't used it just yet. Yeah, they're going to want to be spamming as many spells as they can in that mid lane to stack up the tiers. And the blue buffs, like I said, so important with both of these mid laners. So if the junglers can make their presence felt and actually ward up early on the enemy's blue buff, like say, if Vulcan want to take advantage of Mega Zero's early deficit in this top lane, uh-oh, we have the ghost there from Sid. We have ghosts from Psycho Sid, but it's really <laughs> just defensive duties, I think. Meanwhile, looks like they're going to start stacking up in the top lane. Yep, we have uh, the bear coming around the back, but again, Mega Zero is going to run right into him. He does go straight in, face plants in there, does get the flip, tries to put some more damage down. Clakey D has shown himself visible, and now he's walked past that ward. They know exactly that he's nearby. Smithy, though, does look like the turret's going to go down. Will they continue on? He's going to have the cooldown back up on that flip in the moment. They haven't taken the turret. They've made a mistake. They get the flip on Clakey D. They try and pull him back, but they can't get the damage down. It does, of course, mean that that turret will go. Yep. So even though they have the Nasus jungle, which is the superior wave clear, they weren't able to fend this turret. Uh, and it does go down very early. Not only do they get first blood, but they get first turret as well. Very substantial lead for Vulcan right here. That Lulu Caitlyn lane just so good at taking the early towers. So mandatory cloud. He's evolved his void spikes, as you would expect in that mid lane. Kind of a standard level one, uh, level six start from Man Cloud on Kha'Zix. Meanwhile, Echo. Keeping the pressure down, we'll have that laser now. We'll be able to try and start clearing as much as possible, try and get the poke on. But as you mentioned, it is Vulcan, who are currently above Marn in the uh, table. Just keeping that standings even and with the advantages. It's only built up, though. Look, despite that, they yeah. had that first kill and first turret. It's only 200 difference. Me and Tanso did a really good job with Heartbeat down bottom. They answered with a turret shortly after, so at least they don't have that global gold advantage. And you get a slight... Um, lead by having the advantage in your bottom lane because that's where the dragon is and that's where uh, it will be mostly contested on the map um, after this because it looks like we have Lulu um, they're gonna switch up the lanes and now it's gonna be a two versus two in bottom is we're gonna go back to a, a normal yeah. um, wants to season play that two again. style of they'll, play they'll here after the turret's it. already down. <laughs> well, they while it's a normal, normal setup we definitely have day. different builds between be the two. Guess. You can see played in BF <laughs> or versus Looks like Smithy is a little deep here in the jungle. They see, see him with some wards, and Echo gets a catch. He does get caught out. The light bindings was there, but it's not enough to follow it up. They didn't use the laser. It was available. Could have probably gone for the kill maybe on Smithy there. Yeah, he doesn't have too much mana, and that Volibear passive could just do so much work. If you get him below that 30%, he'll just regen up again another 30%. So they decide he doesn't want to waste the rest of his mana, and he goes back to laning. They just get him out of their jungle and return to uh, the normal farming style. So Mancloud picks himself up the blue buff. No blue buff for Echo just yet. I think Smithy will be working, uh, Clicky D, sorry, will work his way around there. Smithy may work his way around there if he leaves it any longer. Man Cloud does just sidestep there, and now they're going to see going towards the blue. And as I mentioned that, looks like Psycho Sid wants to sniff on that blue. Yeah, he's making a good move there. I like the ward. So when we have pressure against 
these mid laners that really, really... Oh, here we go. Mentor Clad's coming in to contest it. Both of them va value that blue buff so much. They saw him come in, and Muffy taking a lot of damage. He stood on top of Ward. Will he be able to get sniped down? Yes, he will. The Enton so gets the kill. Could see Howling Gale trying to knock up Zuni and maybe force the flash away. Meanwhile, down the bottom there, you can see the blue buff actually on the top lane. Was trying to get stole away, but Echo used that final spark to maybe secure it. The difference right there was Nian Tanso went with the full damage build. He has no boots, he just went with straight BF Sword. As soon as he get a BF Sword, he went back, grabbed that. Whereas Caitlyn there, she upgraded her boots, got sort of the pickaxe that she wants to turn into an Infinity Edge, and it's a lot less just straight burst damage. Oh, mandatory Cloud. Currently keeping up the farm with Echo 71 to 75. Meanwhile, that bottom lane, it was the Enton. So we do see a teleport coming out from Psycho Sid here. They're going to try and collapse on towards the Enton. So I feel they have got Zuna back down here. Going to come around, gets the slowdown. Will flip him in. Barry has been used. Is it going to be enough? Zuna's taken low now. He's going to go in towards the bush, but there's a ward there. They spotted him out there. And now Psycho Sid's in trouble. Here comes Flaky D. The wither goes down. The wither. Spirit fire on top of him. The Enton. So putting the damage down at the back there. Muffy Cutie trying to protect them. Has to keep away from this one. And Clay KD can't follow it through. That heart. Oh, Me now Smithy up top. Meanwhile, at the top, it is going to be Mega Zero. He does get the kill on Smithy. Back and forth action, but Mandatory Cloud, he's going to come in ultimate running. He's going to jump straight across. Does manage to catch him out, and he is completely separated. Mega Zero is not going to be able to get away from this one. All the harpoons <laughs> in the world would not prevent the void spikes of Mandatory Cloud picking up the kill. It's 3 2. Suddenly, the action happens. Some vengeance for Vulcan right there, and now they have a Kazakhs with double buff. That is really big. So he wants to get as quickly to his second evolution as possible. Once he can get the resets with the jumps, then everything's going to get really exciting and we can go to town. He's going to try and go to town. It does look like Marn are setting up for Dragon here. And Heartbeat, I just want to shout out from that last play. I was talking about everyone on to keep his art, their eyes on the Janna play. He really played that very well. He protected Nian Tanso. They turned it around. They got the kill on Zuna first, and he even got out with his life. Now, look at all this Vision Ward. Uh, the Vision Ward's from Marn. They're not actually going to kill the pink one over here. They're just going to try and burst down the dragon. They can't actually see it. We just saw the Vision. He can see that one, but he can't oh. see no Vision of the... Zuna's ward that he has just down at the side there. Harpy now, they're actually pinned in. They have to, they're committed to try and get this dragon down. Clay D still tanking it up there. Echo, nobody else really doing damage on it. So Clay D's being left alone. The Enton so getting in there. Dragon has gone down and now they just need to evacuate. And that is exactly what they're doing. Of course, the teleport from Psycho Sid was not available, so they couldn't try and overnumber them with five and four. The Enton so just creates so much pressure for this team. You saw him fighting over the wall there with Caitlyn, and he definitely got the better of that exchange. He's already upgraded into that Bloodthirst so now he's going to be stacking that up with this free farm down bottom and once he has a fully stacked bloodthirster then we're going to see the grouping here from Marn and they'll probably look to take a, a middle turret next maybe even help out Mega Zero and and go for that top lane. Echo trying to catch the light bind and see if they can smoke something away from Mandatory Cloud. Instead, Spiritfire used to try and shove this mid lane. We do see the AD carry on there in turn, so starting to work towards it. So it's going to be a four man stack from Marn for this mid lane. But look at that Mandatory Cloud just clearing that wave, no problem with the Void Spikes. Yeah, both of them have really good wave clear right now, so it will be hard, but they did send everyone over to that mid lane. Uh, now that they've taken the bottom turret, the AD and support are free to go for other objectives, and they should put a lot of pressure. There's only two members currently defending for Vulcan. But like you said, those Void Spikes are just amazing wave clear, especially with Lulu's Glitterlands. Look at that. It's clearing it out before they even get close to it. While this is happening, they're given buying time for Zuna. Zuna's been free farming down the bottom. He's now shoving on towards the turret. You can see, looks like Clay GD is going to try and cut him off, try and prevent him getting on towards that, but he has a siege line of minions coming in there. Clay GD he will clear a lot down with the Spirit Fire, but he's going to get a good few shots, free shots on towards that. I don't think there's going to be anything oh. that Clay KD can follow it up with. He missed uh, one of his siphoning strikes there. <laughs> Key Nasus mistake. <laughs> uh, you can see it's only level one right now, and he's only got plus 75 extra damage on it, so not really a big factor yet. Not a big factor Only 12 yet. minutes. We'll get stronger and stronger as the game goes on. Of course, we'll try and keep you posted on that one. Zuna keeping that free farm going. He is still behind the Intonso farm, and of course that is because he's 2-0 down in kills. Clicky D, he's doing a good job at clearing these waves. That Spirit Fire, of course, will be up to about level 3 or 4 by now. We'll definitely be stacking it up. He's put Wither down on towards Zuna, and that's obviously going to present prevent him from doing more damage on towards that turret. So continuing the pressure in this mid lane, though, Ma now stacking four members up in there. Yeah, and Clayky's slowly running out of mana, so he won't be able to defend that bottom quite as well. A nice finding does land on a Mantory Cloud, but the wave clear is still there. This Void Spike plus Glitterlance combo is doing so much work for Vulcan. 
Nianton So just catching the, the uh, arrow. I keep calling it a spear because it's like a niddly spear almost <laughs> in through there. But it catches on towards him. Zuna keeping pressure on himself from Clay KD. Clay KD, like you mentioned, out of mana. He can't defend him much longer. Mandatory Cloud, though, with that blue buff, he's going to come back. He's going to have a hell of a lot of mana to try and keep these waves away. Expecting to maybe come around the side. The bear's going to come around the side. Looks like Vulcan are going to try and set something up here. Oh, Smithy backs off, though. Yeah, and they only need two more hits on that turret. They do take it down. They actually use the Intanto's ultimate. And they might well get him down here. You can see the lasers going to come through. There's the snipe coming out from the Intanto. Just snuck him out there, and he just stuck around <laughs> a little too long. Didn't realize the tower was going to go so quick. And it was a little bit of a delayed move there by Marn. It looked like Niantanto made a call by, by, his, by his actions. You know, your actions speak louder than your words. He used his ultimate, so then everyone else decided to use their ultimates. The laser and the rumble coming in right there, finishing off that singed. It's a perfectly legit way of doing it as well. And bear in mind, Niantanto, so this is only your second week in the LCS, of course, so may not be quite so confident to make the call. Simply said, hey, guys, I landed the <laughs> skill shot, so maybe one, everybody else wants to tag in on this one and use some uh, skills as well. So Clakey D is going to keep building that queue up as much as he can. He's just clearing out the wave as well, continuing on. So, let's have a look across. Zuna currently it has fell behind the Entonso. The Entonso now 3-0 up. 125 to 112. And you can see in terms of gold, that's 1,200 gold he has over the AD carry. Looking across the other lanes, there's a 900 gold lead built up by Mega Zero over Psycho Sid. And the mid lane, it's actually 500 gold swinging towards Mandatory Cloud. Not only is Niantanto ahead in gold, but he chose the item path that's a really large uh, power spike in the mid game. His fully stacked Bloodthirster is so much more effective than Zuna's partially completed Infinity Edge. It's going to be a while until he can finish the Infinity Edge, and then it will start to balance out. But until that point, Niantanto is really king on the map right now. So Niantanto comes back in towards his mid lane. Now 2-1 down in turret. Smithy not being able to really help set up any of those ganks other than those initial ones which you'd expect. Oh, and there's going to be the laser sniped on towards Man Cloud. He should be able to just keep himself life-stealing back. He's already almost built up that Bloodthirster, so he will have the life steal back on there. Smithy, though, looking like they're going to try and bait this one out. Which one's he going to go for? Is he going to be Clakey D or is it going to be Echo instead? He's going to walk in. He will be Echo. He goes for but Clakey D seems huh. to be the target. He got close up too, and now comes Zuna coming around the side. The damage is going to come out. It's Mandatory Cloud that picks up the kill. Good job collapsing there by Vulcan. And you have to remember, at this point, Vulcan are the ones with the teleport. They have Psycho Sid. He still has his teleport up. It's ready to go. So Marn have to be careful of anything they go for on the map. It could easily turn into a five on four situation because Mega Zero up there, even though he doesn't have uh, teleport, he's still having a hard time. Hook coming out. Echo's doing his best to keep them away from this mid lane turret. Pings are down on that blue buff area. Remember, they saw them picking up the last one, so they're going to be well aware of the exact timer for when that spawns, so they can try and keep it away. Echo, of course, currently sitting on it, so it's going to be a little while yet. 16 seconds before the dragon spawns. Psycho Sid, I guess he's going to try and keep Mega Zero as busy as possible. And looking like, yeah, don't, don't, don't back away right in the full vision of everyone else there, Muffy Cutie, before the dragon spawns. <laughs> Definitely don't want to waste your HP before a dragon fight because another way to take an objective is just to get a lot of your opponents low. You don't even have to kill someone as long as you have that dragon timer. It looks like Marn are actually going to go for this one. There is a teleport available from Sins, but nobody else on Vulcan are in place to make any moves. So this looks like it'll be a free dragon for Marn. They increase their gold lead and they're still sitting pretty, even though Mega Zero over here has been having a really tough time. Yeah, I wonder whether that's just Vulcan just didn't simply have the timer on Dragon there or not, because it was Marn that picked it up the first time around. So, whether well, they just weren't ready for that at all, because everyone seemed to back just at the wrong time. Yeah, and it's it feel, it's interesting because they have the Sin split pushing, so it feels like there's more map pressure from Vulcan, but Marn are ahead in gold, and they're getting the objectives. They're actually just slowly winning this game and, and catching people out. If they can catch someone with a Lux Binding, he's got that blue buff. He's going to be throwing things out. Four members grouping top, though. Oh, but you can see Mandatory Cloud, he's going to jump on Echo, flashes through, both of them flash the light binding catches, but he's going to maybe have the jump, no! 
He does get away from this one, but it does seem that the top turret, while this is all happening, is going to go down. And Martin now 3-1 to one up into it. Like you mentioned, the four-man stack. It's going to be 3-2, though. Zuna quickly equalizing as much as he can, taking that bottom lane. He's been working on it for a long time. Psycho Sid doing the best job he can to try and keep them away from this inner turret. Now Smithy comes around to help. He's also got Muffin Cutie coming around from the red buff. They're all coming in from every angle. The glue gets thrown down. I don't think they're going to go full aggressive on this one. Yes, they will. Mandatory Cloud's heading up. He's going to come through. He's going to go through the ward in the tribal so they know he's there. Meanwhile, down the bottom, you can see Echo and Muffin Cutie going for it. That's going to be the ultimate miss from Yenton. So, and it looks like Vulcan are going to continue pursuing. That's a big cooldown down for Marn. They don't really want to fight this now. They're going to make a full disengage even after the glue comes out. And Echo down bottom, he could actually burst down Zuna if he's able to land another combo. He's already got him at half-life. Well, he's got the final spark available. If he catches a light binding on him, Zuna, I think, realizes this. He will get oh, taken down. Oh, he's got the light binding. There's the final spark, and he's sniped out of it. And he used the flash as well, just at the wrong time. Now they go aggressive on Psycho Sid at the top there. Wild growth used. Is it going to be enough? Running through that poison trial. Oh, Muffin Cutie nearly got sniped out. Mandatory Cloud, meanwhile, takes down that mid turret, but it's going to be an inner turret down as well. Marm going to take this one down on the top lane. Suddenly, the action happens all across the map. <laughs> they continue pushing up there. It looks like they don't want to go on to the inhibitor turret, uh, even though they do have the kill on Zuna right now, it's interesting they decide not to keep up the pressure. They're just going to decide to uh, go back and purchase with all the global gold that they just got. Two turrets is a lot. Well, we do see the items starting to pop in there. We can see Bloodthirster and Zeal now on uh, Ninton, so almost got that Phantom Dancer ready because he's got the Cloak of Agility already in there. Meanwhile, Infinity Edge was picked up by Zuna. Mid lane, of course, Morel Nomicon on there. That tier's been stacking for a long time. We're expecting that to get turned into, what do you think, Muramano, or is he going to go for the Seraph's Embrace? Uh, Seraph's Embrace, probably, just to get that the extra HP. And he, you can see how much he's needed the shields. The last time he actually used his barrier a little early, got scared of Mandatory Cloud. If Mandatory Cloud can burst down one person on Marn and get that reset, then it could be really bad. So the squishy people like Echo and like the Intanso might consider building a little bit of defense that Seraph's Embrace would be a really good choice. So we do see also the Bloodthirster being picked up by Mandatory Cloud, expecting to go health. And there it is straight away. Psycho Sid putting the glue down, making sure he doesn't get collapsed on by Mega Zero there, along with Heartbeat with him, of course. The fact that the Heartbeat is in there on Janna is going to give the Intonso that extra barrier should the fights kick off. And of course, that Monsoon could try and keep Mandatory Cloud away if he were to jump in pop the ulti, blow him backwards. Yeah, that would be perfect. They don't want him to get that first reset. That's all important. And they want to keep the Intanso able to keep on firing away from the back lines. Like we've pointed out, every time Varus gets picked, he's amazing with his crowd control and his percentage damage. The only thing he's lacking is that escape, the repositioning in team fights. So you really have to be on your game and not make the first mistake. We do see mandatory cloud way down the bottom. We see Psycho Sid way up the top, and Mana going, well, why not spy man stack this mid lane and see if we can get ourselves a second inner turret of the game. And you see the pings coming down. Man Cloud has actually pinged it, and he's coming in from behind. I expect Vulcan to go for this one. Smithy's starting to get aggressive. It's Clakey D's going for, but he's going to get sniped out there. He does get taken out. No, flashes out. And you can see Psycho Sid now comes in. Mega Zero, though, does manage to pick up the kill. That's going to be Smithy going down. And Mandatory Cloud, he's trying to kite them away from this one. But gets flipped and jumps at the same time. Man Cloud's going to get focused on here. Muffin Cutie taken down low. Man Cloud does get dropped. Mega Zero with a flame spin. He gets flipped in oh. towards him. And now comes in towards Zuna. Psycho Sid goes down. Almost an ace there. Zuna gets away with nothing left on his health. And it's going to be another. Another inner turret for Mar. Oh, look how low Niatanso is right now. Got out with single digits of life there, and Vulcan just kind of misplayed. They had two people split pushing. One teleport was available. They tried to have Psycho Sid come in from the back with Mentor Cloud following in behind him, but the split team fight did not work out because Marn had already decided to engage. Nice combo there from Echo, and they do get the win out of that, also taking down the middle turret. You gotta feel if Mandatory Cloud had managed to get that jump work, mm -hmm. if it had cleared the trees, he just failed jumped, sort of face planted into those trees. Uh, cartoon style, I think you could uh, imagine there, but didn't quite get through it, which means he couldn't get across, didn't get any resets. And despite the fact they tried to cleverly set up a pincer move, it so rarely works unless it's executed absolutely perfectly. So, big advantage is built by Marn now. 5-3 in turret, you can see the gold swing. 5.5 thousand gold and 9-5 uh, in kills. 
There's big advantages for Marn, and Marn, of course, remember, they're chasing. They're in sixth place. They want that fifth spot. They want to get ahead of Vulcan. Yeah, sort of the, the thinking behind Vulcan's strategy there was a split out team fight they thought would be good because they don't have a hard engage on their team. We saw this yesterday with TSM, where once you got into the mid and late games, since they don't have that hard stun to start it off, really they have to use their tanks just running at uh, at Team Marn here. So if, if Vulcan can get Psycho Sid and Smithy just running at someone and catching them out, then that's really their only reliable engage. They don't have someone like, um, like a Malphite or something, which would be the perfect hard stun to start that off with. Well, they continue while they're catching up the dragon here. They were chasing Mandatory Cloud away. Looks like Mega Zero successfully bullied him out. Echo was seeing if he could pick anything up. Shield thrown out. Easy dragon pick up by Marn. That's going to extend their gold lead as well. And it is now over 6,000 ahead. And maybe, may just maybe, they're going to try and collapse in. See if they can take away the blue buff. Anything they can get towards Vulcan. Of course, that bottom inner turret is ultimate target. It's the last one remaining just outside of the base. Yeah, this is actually a good position for Vulcan. Since Marn are already tanking it, if they could get all their members here, then it would be a good fight to take. The only thing is that Singe teleport is actually down right now. So they're kind of bluffing this split push. Well, they're bluffing it. You can see they're saying, yeah, yeah kind of psycho sit. You might need to come back. They're going to keep pushing it in this one. They are going to lose this inner turret. There's nothing they can do about it. They've got to hope that psycho sit can do enough to try and get in there because Marn are going to keep pressure on this inhibitor. Yeah, they're just going to keep going. They're not going to take that bait. They've timed the teleport. They know that it just went off in that last fight, and they're not going to fall for it. An inhibitor turret for an outer turret is a great trade. Uh, Vulcan don't really want to take this. I don't know why Psycho won't come back. He hasn't backed yet. You can see the ultimates are all available. And there's a snipe coming through again on towards Muffin. Oh. Cutie taken very low. They might snipe him down. They do. It's Mega Zero that gets it with the equalizer, and that puts them really low. 3v5 right now on this turret. And there's still no back comes out from Psycho Seed. He gets the turret down. Now he's backing, but is it too late? Marn keep knocking on that front door. Eventually, someone's going to have to answer, and it's Marn that come through with a boot. Yeah, it's too. It's way too late right now. You need a turret when you have a Caitlyn comp like this. She has to be firing from those back lines with some sort of protection. Now Smithy wants to go in. One more hit on the inhibitors is all it needs, but it doesn't matter because Echo takes down Smithy, and now they're in all sorts of trouble. You can see Zune off the side there. He gets caught out. Mandatory Cloud taken down Ooh. very low. Wild Grunt comes out. Now he tries to come in, doesn't get the reset, but Zuna goes down, and he has to run back to the fountain. Inhibitor taken, and it's going to be a quick evacuation from Marn. Yeah, Marn looking really good in this game. Zuna actually flash one way the 90 caliber net the other way there couldn't even make up his mind an inhibitor down already it looks like Marn want to turn around their losing streak versus Vulcan it does indeed and there's going to be the blue buff as well being picked up looks like that's going to go across yeah Echo takes that one away Psycho Sid pushing back down this mid lane which was just cleared out the wave pushed by Nienton so 5-0-4 currently Nienton so versus a 2-3-2 Zuna we're so used to hearing him shouting get sniped but right now he is getting sniped and it's Nienton so and Echo being the executors yeah and also Mega Zero is doing a great job I have to say he was behind pretty much all of the early game there he was taking a lot of pressure from Psycho Sid but he just farmed up and he built more tanky and he went for that great combo of the Leandris plus the Rylas Crystal Scepter so even though he doesn't have a whole lot of burst he's got the burn damage he can slowly burn everyone on the team get his slows down around everywhere and he's fairly tanky so he can kind of get in the fray so Mega Zero, as you talked about, 4-3-5, got that Leandris, got that Rylas in there. So the slow and dirtiness of uh, Mega Zero's Rumble's Flame Spitter is going to be stinging. Muffin Cutie with an Oracle. Ooh, I was going to say, don't go walk straight into that bush. That's <laughs> straight, straight face checking with Heartbeats in full vision with an Oracle. And the moment he puts that ward down, it was cleared straight out by Heartbeat. And now, Heartbeat seems settled in that role, honestly, to me. 0-1-8 playing a fantastic support role right now. Yeah, very well played. I was talking about the how Jen is a very technical um, support to play, and he's he's really playing her very well. So props to him. He's a very versatile player. He can play mid, he can play AD, support, no problem. Maybe it's that Nian Tanso swag, just being in bottom lane with him makes you better. Just makes you better. He seems happy right now. Zuna practically heads for in the camera as well. He gets that engrossed in the screen. Oh, and Smithy getting caught out there. Bit of poke. Didn't go for the ultimate, though. They were just waiting to see if they could get a juicier target. And that juicier target may well have been Mandatory Cloud. We saw him get slowed down there by Clakey D. 
it's not going to keep him away from this one. He's got a Siege Minion. They're going to get some more Pokemon towards this one. And again, Psycho City's not with the team. He's off the bottom there. It's another inhibitor gone without even challenging it. He's got the teleport this time, but he teleported so far away. Look, he's behind. Baron still has to run too far. The turret's already down. The Equalizer comes in. The final spark goes through. And now Smith is going to be targeted on the Flame Spit. Comes out from Mega Zero. He's not going to be able to get away from this one. It's the Anton, so that picks up the kill. And now we see a flash coming out from Muffin Cutie. Finally, he does start joining the fight, but he's in the middle of nowhere. He can't go 1v5. He's going to try and throw that glue out, but they've already evacuated. And look at the stack coming in the top now. The inhibitor's going to go down again. It's another one they go for. Final spark on towards Mandatory Cloud. Mega Zero lands the Harpoon, keeps him away. They keep poking on this one. Psycho is doing what he can, laying a poison trail around everything, but it doesn't matter. The Enton so is cleaning up. Mandatory Cloud goes down. He gets the double. Can he get the triple? Going to see if he can poke anything else. They've got Super Minions now. Zuna's being forced well away from this one by Echo. Another inhibitor down. That's all three of them. Echo's going to chase it with the final spark. He oh. gets the snipe down on Zuna. And now it's going to be the Nexus turrets dropping in unison. And finally, the Nexus will go down. It's Marn taking down Vulcan 16-5. Oh, that seems like a case of Psycho Sid was the, the father on the business trip, and he came home a little too late to find the party was thrown and his house was trashed. His base was all gone by the time he got back. There was nothing he could do except yell at the rest of his team. Absolute perfect analogy there, Kobe. And well, you can see the man hugs coming out from uh, Man right now. They've gone with the blue number today, the blue number of shirts. They've got a number of shirts they could use out there. And the uh, the guns of Clakey D and Mega Zero. Well, we talked to Mario at the start. He's been Mega Hero in the past, but honestly, fantastic play from the entire team this time around. And Man really showing that they deserve their spot here in the LCS. Yeah, this is the first time I've seen them a little uncoordinated. We had Mega Zero with the pink one. The Intanto was rocking the blue, but it looks like they, gold they've got their zero, own yeah. individual styles here. So uh, everybody branching out. Oh yeah, the Intanto with the gold. Yeah, looking all flashy, of course. When they've got that many shirts available to them, why not pull out anything you can? And it's great to see the sportsmanship, of course, between these teams. Mega Zero happy there. Thumbs up to the camera as well as the guns from everyone. The Intanto, you know, he's in.